Praise the Lord, my dear friends. And once again, I welcome you to uh, my channel where you are listening to the Word of God. And as I promised all through the lockdown, there would be a video on the Word and the video on worship. So, welcome. And if you're new, I would request you to kindly subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you receive every day the Word and worship all through this lockdown period. No matter how long this lockdown goes on, uh, if it's extended also, we will continue. And if it stops uh, on the uh, uh, prescribed date, then from then on, you will be still receiving the word and this worship video. However, the frequency will be a little less instead of every day. It will be once a week. And so do subscribe and forward these videos to as many people as you can. The English and Hindi videos will be available in uh, my channel. So you can check them out and send them to uh, people likewise. Now, yesterday I received a wonderful question uh, on WhatsApp. Somebody who's been uh, following my videos for quite some time and who I have known uh, for quite some time. He's been a wonderful person, a wonderful brother of mine. And uh, he asked a very valid question and probably this question has been in the hearts of many people and probably they fear uh, asking people straight or they're not uh, quite uh, free with people to ask such kind of questions. So I thought let me take this question up as my topic for uh, this um, video. And by the way, if you have a question, if you have uh, a, you know, a point in which you want to know something, if you have a question related to the word of God, you want me to make a video on it, on a particular topic, you can feel free to WhatsApp me, email me, and I will be more than happy to, uh, uh, you know, answer those, make videos on them. It might not be immediately, uh, but uh, it might take some time, but definitely I will try to answer your question. And if it is something which a video should not be made about, then I will uh, email you and I will answer your question back. Uh, directly. So, the first question uh, that was asked to me was, how should I build a relationship with Christ? How should I build a relationship with Christ? That's the first question. The second question, how to stay away from sin? You know, initially I thought I would make two separate videos, one today and tomorrow, but then I thought that there's no point in making two videos because both these points are actually uh, related. You know, the first question, how to build a relationship with Christ and the second question, how to stay away from sin. The second is related with the first one. So let's start with our subject today. Now, how do I build a relationship with Christ? Now, many people will say, oh, you must pray. Uh, many people will say you must read uh, more of the word. Many people will say you need to go for more prayer meetings. Many people will say that you need to have, a, uh, you know, you, you need to uh, uh, do this, you need to do that. But in one word, if you have to answer that, in one single word, that would be communication. Praise the Lord. Now, in that communication, everything is there. You know, communication is what? It's speaking and it is listening. Now, often as believers, what happens to us is we are filled with the speaking part. We keep speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking where we don't give space for God, for Jesus, for the Holy Spirit Lord to speak into our lives. We don't give him space. How many of us actually have uh, sat down praying and then sat down just quietly asking the Lord, Lord, you speak to me. Trust me, that is the most difficult part of your relationship with God. You can pray for hours. You can, you know, you can worship for hours. Me being a worship man, you know, I, I really love worship, but uh, uh, not, uh, you know, offending anyone. But I would like to say we can worship for hours. We can praise for hours. We can pray for hours. We can read the word for hours. But when it comes to silently sitting and seeking the Lord, silently sitting and listening to the voice of God, we cannot because it is a challenge. I challenge you when we sit down to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to tell us, when we sit down to listen to what God has to tell us, let me tell you, the moment you close your eyes and sit down in silence, 
automatically the very next second, the very next minute, your mind starts wandering here and there. You start getting distracted distracted you start hearing people speak to you people will come into the room people will disturb you you will feel distracted you will never be able to do that thoughts will be running your mind you will be thinking about uh, various things you will be thinking about even the very passage that you read you will be even thinking about the very moment that you are in you will be thinking 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 thoughts will be uh, you know uh, playing in your mind but you will not be able to sit down for a few minutes and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. My dear brothers and sisters, trust me, initially, right at the very beginning when I entered into ministry, it was the most difficult part of my life. The most challenging part of my life was to sit down and listen to what the Lord has to say. It was very challenging for me to sit down and to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. Now, when we look at the life, the best example that we can take from the word is Jesus himself. His life was filled with communication. By the way, I want to tell you something. The secret of success to any relationship, whether it is a relationship between a husband, wife, wife, husband, parents, children, in the family, in your career, in your workplace, in your society, at, uh, you know, in your businesses, even in your ministry, in your churches, with, uh, you know, with the church leaders and the congregation, amongst the congregation, everywhere, the secret to a successful relationship, a healthy relationship, in all these areas, in any area, is proper and good communication. Now, what is proper and good communication? Proper and good communication is I speak and I listen. Not only speak, but I need to be a good listener as well. And that is the secret to a healthy and an excellent relationship with Jesus Christ, my dear Lord. If you are new and you're thinking to start again this relationship with our Lord, I would tell you, get ready, train yourself, practice listening Speaking and listening. My dear brothers and sisters, we see Jesus in his entire life. He spoke, he listened, he spoke, he listened, he spoke, he listened. You know, there was this instance where we see about the transfiguration. Let's read Luke chapter uh, 9. And this is the transfiguration where Jesus takes his disciples, uh, Jesus, James, John, Peter, up the mountain and uh, to pray. Now they're going to pray. And the moment Jesus, see, this is communication happening. Where did Jesus go? He went up the mountain. Why? To pray. He goes to speak along with his disciples. Now, he already spoke to his disciples before climbing up the mountain. And uh, he did miracles. He taught. If you read the uh, earlier uh, verses. Now he's going up to the uh, mountain. Why? To speak. What happens? He goes to pray. Now, and while he was praying, the aspect of his face was changed. This is verse 29 of Luke 9. Two men were talking with Jesus, Moses and Elijah. You see, Jesus went to speak. Two men are talking with Jesus. Now, Jesus is listening. Moses and Elijah speak, so he's listening. Appearing in the glory of heaven, Moses and Elijah spoke to Jesus about his departure from this life, which was to take place in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had fallen asleep, but they awoke suddenly and they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were about to leave, Peter, not knowing what to say, said to Jesus, Master, how good it is for us to be here. Let us make three tents for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Now you see, Peter, he didn't care about listening. He didn't care about listening what Jesus had to say. He didn't care to wait and wait for his master to come out or come to him and call him, Peter, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to listen. He didn't care. But immediately what he did was he just started speaking. What did he say? Master, how good it is for us to be. Let me make three tens, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. You see, without knowing, he wanted... Uh, you know, he wanted to just be there. He wanted even probably wipe three tents. He wanted to put even uh, Jesus in one of those tents. Now, uh, verse 34. 
because Peter didn't care to listen. Someone made him listen. Verse 34, And no sooner than had he spoken, then a cloud appeared and covered with him, and the disciples were afraid as they entered the cloud. These words came from the cloud. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you see Jesus in his entire life. He was an excellent communicator. He not only spoke, he listened. It is very important. If we want to build a healthy relationship with Jesus, we must start listening and speaking. Does not mean I stop speaking. What is our speaking? Our prayer, our reading the word, our worship, our praise. This is our speaking. What is our listening? Where we sit down quietly in our rooms or in a chapel or, uh, or before the Lord where we are sitting and quietly we ask the Lord, Lord, speak to me. And then the Lord starts speaking. It's not going to happen in one day, my dear brothers and sisters, if you're watching this video, you think that today I'm going to sit on silent and I'm going to expect God to work. And I close my eyes and I wait. And then I open one eye and see nobody's listening. Nobody's talking. There's nothing. Nothing happened. I go back. It's not going to happen in one day. It's not going to happen in two days. It's a gradual process. Once your heart is trained, once your mind is trained, once you are trained, when you're filling yourself with the word, when you're filling yourself with uh, worship, when you're filling yourself with uh, prayer, when you're filling yourself with the Holy Spirit, Gradually, it's a gradual process and as you grow, as you grow, you will all of a sudden one day when you are in a quiet time and praying, Lord, speak to me. All of a sudden you will hear Holy Spirit God whispering in your ears, speaking to you, my son, my son, this is what you need to do or whatever your question is, he will give an answer to it. Or if you're seeking guidance, he will guide you as to what you need to do, what you shouldn't. Now, that brings me to the second point. How should I avoid sin? How should I keep myself falling into sin or into the same sin over and over again? My dear brothers and sisters, I would just ask you one simple question. What is darkness? Many of us who know and uh, who are into science, we will know the definition of darkness is the absence of light. The same way, what is the definition of sin? It is the absence of the Lord. It is the absence of Jesus. It is the absence of holiness in your life. Praise the Lord. How to avoid being in sin? You know, uh, the number of divorces in our country are slowly coming up. Our country was never a culture of divorces. Like in the Western countries, divorces, uh, you know, it's uh, uncountable. The numbers or number of div divorces is something which is absolutely natural. In our country, divorces were absolutely a taboo. But now slowly, slowly, you see the number of divorces are increasing. Broken homes, broken families. Why? Because of the lack of communication. Now you see, the divorces which are taking place are not because, are not because just lack of communication. But what is happening because of the lack of communication? The wife goes behind somebody else. The husband goes behind somebody else. Not only between husband and wife, but even between parents and children. What happens is parents don't communicate with children. Children don't communicate with parents. They don't have proper communication. So because of which there is a third person interfering from outside. Either it is with the parents or either it is with the children. And that is a very dangerous situation when you have a third person trying to intervene and try to uh, you know, interfere in the relationship of your home. Why? Because you are not communicating. Parents are not communicating to children because of which children are not able to communicate to parents. That is the reason why the relationship between parents and children are becoming sour. The same thing in families. People are not discussing. People are not uh, you know, communicating with each other. Either they are only speaking, they are not listening. Or they don't speak at all. So listening is out of the question because of which you have external interference. People from outside who don't even belong to the family, they start coming and interfering and start telling you how you need to discipline your home or this is what you need to do tomorrow. This is what you need to do in your life. This is what you need to do. This is the road that you need to take. This 
spoils the home because why again no communication the same way when our communication with the lord is broken when there is a gap automatically there is the interference of satan he comes and takes that place you know that's the reason the word of god even jesus himself said that satan that an evil spirit when it comes out of a person it moves around the world to and fro seeking where he might go but does not find a place what he does he comes back to the his old place and he sees that is white wash it is clean it is prepared and what he does he sees that place which is empty where he was he goes and brings seven other demons and he decides in that place why because there is a vacuum. Vacuum, there is a gap my dear brothers and sisters in order to keep our life from sin is to start communicating with him the moment you see you are fellowshipping with the lord always the reason why we we find prayer a burden most christians we find prayer a burden is because we don't communicate it is a one way process how long will i pray brother many questions this is the most common question which people ask me how long should i pray i'm praying 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 but there is no answer my dear brothers and sisters that is the problem because you are praying 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 it's time my dear brothers and sisters to just stop praying but start praying and listening these are two sides of the same coin start praying and start listening the moment you start praying and start listening you will see you will start communicating with the lord and once you start communicating you will see your prayer life you will not even know throughout the day 24 hours of the day you see you will be speaking with the holy spirit connected with him and he will be guiding you here and there my dear brothers and sisters i thank you for joining me today and i welcome you again once again and you're free to subscribe to my youtube channel forward this video to as many as uh, people as you can so that it helps me reach more and more people and uh, have a healthy relationship with jesus as you start praying and communicating praying and listening with him for more videos stay tuned hit the notification icon the bell that is there beside the subscribe button so that you you will receive such messages every day my dear brothers and sisters i thank you for joining me today have a wonderful day ahead praise the lord